Well, just from a technical standpoint, we're at completely different places when we look at Iran's nuclear program today than we were with North Korea's. And if you just look at the fact that for the last uh, months we've been negotiating, we've been living under the joint plan of action, where Iran's nuclear program is frozen, it's rolled back in key areas, and the IAEA has confirmed they've lived up to their commitments. State Department spokeswoman Marie Harf on CNN defending comparisons uh, between or actually saying, hey, hey, it's not the same thing, Iran and right. North Korea, they're totally different, different situations with Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth, and Skyping in from Washington, D.C., the former advisor to President Reagan and author of the book, Reagan at Reykjavik, our friend Ken Edelman. Ken, it is so good to have you back on America's Forum. Whenever, Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you, sir. And Whenever I hear North Korea and Iran in the same sentence, I think about really the complicity. They have been working together, have they not? Yes, there is some evidence that they have been working together. and There's some uh, suspicion that the uh, nuclear plant or the nuclear facility that the Israelis took out um, in the desert uh, was a North Korean plant that built by North Korea to be used by uh, Iran. So. They're very shady. All the all the bad guys seem to be in cahoots with each other. You know that? Do you think Russia is also involved in that mix? Yes, it's another bad guy. So all the good guys are on one side, and all the bad guys are on the other side. And it's it's good to keep them separate, you know, and keep them intellectually separate, so that you know who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. And the Iranians are bad guys. Well, uh, Ken, a whole lot of folks are looking at this and they're thinking, "Gee, this this sets up." a framework really not for negotiations but for a nuclear arms race in the Mideast and uh, a lot of folks are blaming President Obama. One of those, somewhat surprisingly, is Alan Dershowitz who was on this program last Friday. Let's listen to what the Harvard Law professor had to say. This is the end of non-proliferation and it's all Barack Obama's fault. The man who I voted for and the man who's making a terrible mistake on nuclear policy in the Middle East. So Alan Dershowitz, heretofore one of Mr. Obama's staunchest supporters, is his assessment accurate? No, I think it's very unfair uh, to President Obama. Uh, President Obama is trying to do just the opposite. The culprits here are the Iranians. Let's let's keep that clear, okay? And that's why I said before, JD, it's it's good to know who the good guys are and the bad guys. And the bad guys are the Iranians and the Russians and the North Koreans and that whole lot. Fact is that the Iranians have wanted to get a nuclear device since the Shah of Iran was on the throne in the mid-70s. Uh, and the fact that they have been pursuing one. I think, bottom line, is that the situation today is almost the ideal situation. In other words, don't conclude an agreement, keep it going, in a sense, they are adhering to the interim agreement we had right now. We're not lifting the sanctions. So if you announce in a few days' time, J.D., that the talks are extended, postponed, uh, the big issues put off till June, as many people say now, to me that's ideal. Just keep putting it off. So uh, Churchill said jaw-jaw is preferable to war-war. We all remember that context. But, but I'm curious, in your mind, you don't believe this is going to set off a, a nuclear arms race, Saudi trying to get the bomb, and, and other other nations in that troubled region? No, if it totally fails, it may do that, J.D. If it succeeds, it will not do that, because the fact is that there will be a time element uh, for us to know if Iran is doing a uh, building a nuclear device, and that time has to be well used. So the, the whole agreement is to give a year's warning time, wake-up time. Okay. What do we do in that time? Well, that depends a lot on the Europeans, so there has to be two negotiations, one with the Iranians and one with the Europeans. And with the Europeans, it has to be clear that if the Iranians are shown to build a bomb during that time, we will impose not just today's sanctions, but even tougher sanctions on Iran. In other words, the stick has to be there, and so many of these times in these negotiations you get something that sounds good, but if they violations, which they certainly were with uh, almost every one of these bad guys, and you need to have the good guys go and really slap on harder sanctions than ever. So you have to have the Germans and the French and the English and the Italians and all those to agree that if 
Iran, Iran goes and breaks the, their understanding that the sanctions will be worse than today. And uh, that is one of the good guys right there, Ken Edelman. His <laughs> book, once again, Reagan at Reykjavik. And we appreciate Ken's assessment. He says, keep talking. Got to have a framework. Just keep dragging it out. Well, we'll see what happens yeah. there. We're going to be right back to talk about the Boston Bomber trial with